like a gamble, I'll pay the price. Thought I could handle something undefined. All right, you guys, we are back with another workout. Uh, today is going to be a beginner workout. We're going to kick your ass. We are going to get you ready to go for the winter, for those parties. Because I know you're going to be eating a lot of cookies, so let's get Turkey to it. So I'm going to put stuffing. her through it. Full body workout, you're only going to need some something elevated, so a chair, a box, whatever you guys can find. You can do this at home or the gym. Yeah, at home or the gym and some dumbbells, okay? So that's all we're using, so let's get to it. What you want to do is you want to do a lot of compound movements to begin with, right? So we're, we're training your mechanics to, to do what we want them to do, okay? So the first thing she's doing, she's coming up, she's stepping up. One foot. Yep, so you're going to go on your tippy toe. Good, push up. Takes the glute, so now she's all in the glute, okay? Bicep curl. Boom, press up. Back down. So notice there's two movements, so do it one more time. So it's one, come up, and then two. It's two, okay, so don't do it wrong. So you guys seen this before, go ahead. It's all in one motion. Okay, so don't do that. Make sure you got one, two movement, and back down. Good, back straight up. Go, boom. Coming up. One, two, one, two, back down. Pop straight up, boom. Push off the heel, go one, two, one, two. Okay, so this is our first movement. The compound movement is using everything is getting you ready to go. Okay, so one more thing extra for this workout is as you come up, um, so a lot of people don't work this, but your ankle is, is a bunch of ligaments working together with your muscles to, to stabilize yourself. Another thing you're working is your core, okay? So staying straight up and pulling your hips straight under you. So if, you're come, if you come from the side, so we, we shoot this way, lift your hands up. So notice that she can be here or she can pull forward. So pulling forward activates the glute uh, maximus and it's gonna help you stabilize yourself with your core and your ankle. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay guys, nothing fancy here. We're just getting the heart rate going. So what she's gonna do, she's stepping up. She's coming up high, back down, and she's lunging. So she's doing a back lunge. Boom, step up, back down. Okay, good. And I want you to step out wide. Okay, so make those feet wide, good. Keep that chest up the whole time. So she's here in a straight plane. So she's not leaning forward here, go down. Not like that, okay? That's wrong. Alright, so this one's we're gonna do an arm circuit. What she's doing is go ahead and do bicep curls. So we're gonna pre-exhaust the muscle. Okay, so we're doing bicep curls. Give me about 12 to 15 reps. Make sure your arms are burning. So she's done 12 to 15 reps. Now what she's gonna do is she's gonna bend. She's gonna push her elbows back and come up to my hand. Boom, right there. Okay, so you're gonna give me actually 30 of these. So notice that it's a very small movement. It's gonna give you a good burn right up in, uh, in the distal part of your arm. Um, and that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so she's bent over slightly and she's pushing just a little bit. Okay, so she's in the range with the, the gravity's pulling out. So what I mean by that is when you're here, there's no tension on the muscle, right? Because you're just pulling up, gravity's going down. So it's actually working your form. When you're here, gravity's on the bicep. Okay, so this is going down. You have a right angle to your arm and everything, go down. Everything after that is what causes your body, your muscle, the bicep to work, okay? So don't go above 90 degrees on these is what I'm trying to say. All right, so next one we're gonna do is a tricep extension. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend over. Her arms are pronated, okay, what does that mean? That means her arms are facing this way towards her, uh, towards the ceiling, and she's gonna push her elbows up. So her elbows are past her back. That makes sense, and bend down even more, and come up. Boom, so she's trying to get it up past her back. Okay, this is gonna cause a lot of tension and torque on the tricep, which is what we want. So these are supersetted with the bicep curls. So you're gonna do your bicep curls, you're gonna do your partials, and then you're gonna go straight into these. And that's the next part of the circuit. So now we're gonna hit shoulders. 
A fast and easy way to hit the row of the delt is uh, Arnold presses, okay? So this is Arnold presses. Good, so that's a good way to do it, but I also want you, at the same time you come up, you're twisting, okay? Like I always say, anytime you produce a force with torque, uh, which means turning and pushing, you're gonna produce, you're gonna stimulate more muscle. Uh, EMG activity is better, which means your nervous system is activated more in the muscle when you twist it as you go up, okay? So her, her stomach's flat, no hyperextension in the back. She's straight up and down. You guys got 15. Once you guys get these, you're gonna bend over and we're gonna go into rear delt flies, okay? So, okay, here, now come up, pause here. And a little trick for you guys is you're gonna twist it. Okay, go ahead, boom, twist it here. Okay, so a lot of people say this is called shoulder impingement. Um, there was a study showing it, but there's a lot of studies showing that it didn't. Um, so it's just your preference. But make sure you go out to the wall. So if she's here, she wants to push, she doesn't want to push her hands back. She wants to put her hands forward and she wants to twist. That's going to activate the rear delt. Okay, do it again. Again, notice that there's a torque in the motion. So rear delt. Boom. And starting out. Hands flat. Go out to the, yeah. You guys want to go away, away and out. Boom. We got her a lighter weight because you don't need a lot of weight to stimulate the real delt. So she's got to do it right. It's a small muscle, so all we're trying to do is push blood into it. So notice her hands are pronated out all the way. What, what you happens is when you twist and you push out against your shoulder blade, you're going to activate your shoulder, uh, your rear delt. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Heart, holding is the hard part. This one's a little bit more advanced. Um, you guys can do it with two legs, one leg, and you guys can also help yourself with the TRX. Okay, so, or any rope or anything to hold on to to help your, yourself up, just like a rope or anything. But here's what she's doing. So she's going down, and this is a weird exercise, but this really gets the heart rate going. So she's coming onto one leg and she's doing a pistol squat. Okay, so a pistol squat is just one leg up, and you're using your momentum when you're rolling to press up. Good, more. Boom. Really use your momentum. Boom. There you go. Back down. Try to get about 10 to 8 of these. Boom. Good. Keep going. And this is going to burn, guys. So that was one leg. Uh, she's doing two legs. Two legs is really easy. Boom. Good. Boom. Good. And that's all there is to it, okay? So try to get eight to 10 reps on each leg or uh, about 15 to 20 on both legs. Okay, that's gonna get your heart rate going. All right guys, so we're doing a chest press on the floor. I really think these are underutilized. A lot of people don't do these anymore. Um, as long as you do them right, they're gonna activate your chest really well. So go ahead and come up. So notice she's only coming up partially, okay? Once you lock your elbow out, tension's off the chest, okay? So about 120 degree angle from your radius to your humerus is but what we want, okay? And she's pressing. So now a little trick, guys, is to tilt these in. Go ahead, push. So what that's doing is it's flexing the forearm muscle to allow tension on the, the chest. So you guys are going to do 15 of these and now put them together. Now you're squeezing them together. Squeeze them together, always in, activates the chest, okay? Her elbows are slightly in, they're not pressed out or too in because if you put them in too much, you're going to activate your triceps and we're going to get the chest right now. Good, she's straight up and down and you're twisting it, okay? This is going to hit the bottom part of the chest, uh, uh, bottom part of the upper chest, insertion into your, your humeral cap. Good, so notice she's just twisting them, okay? So she's coming down and she's coming up. So about this much space between them, don't let them touch. If you let them touch, you're going to hit them, uh, lose tension on the chest, okay? So you guys are going to do 15 of each. Okay, lastly, put them together and come up. Make sure you guys do a, a, a weight light enough. If you guys have a partner, you can help them out. She's activating her upper chest doing this and her shoulders. Okay, guys, 
guys, so that's your four different variations of chest exercises. So this is a finisher, we're gonna to touch back, go ahead and bend down. We're gonna do rows and we're gonna do favorite variations, okay? So what she's doing is she's bringing her elbows in, here, go ahead, go down. And now she's coming, bringing her elbows slightly out, out. The wider you go out, um, your elbows, the, the higher up and out on the back you're gonna hit. So if you notice, you go here, you're gonna work your rear delts. We're not doing that, we're still in the range of the back. So just okay, continue to alternate, okay? So boom here, and let's take these back. Also, you can pro, uh, supinate your, your hands out, so here. So, um, what you're gonna, gonna do is you're gonna stay this position, pull, elbows out, elbows in, elbows out. Then you're gonna go in, pronate, uh, supinate, out, supinate. So, so now her, her hands are out, her thumbs are pointing out, like, away from her. And she's doing the same thing. She's coming in, she's coming out. She's coming in, she's coming out. This is actually very dynamic and you're going to feel a lot in, in different parts of the back when you change your hand position up. Alright guys, so what you guys are going to do, you're going to total uh, 60 reps per one set. So you're going to have your hand position, you're going to go in, out, 15, in, 15, out, and you're going to switch it up. So the total is going to be 60 reps and that's for one set. Full body workout with just dumbbells and an elevation. So again, you can use a chair, anything like that. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing three circuits. Okay, so everything's 15 reps, except the back which uh, and the legs. So the legs, the one leg uh, squats, you're gonna do eight to 10 on each leg or 15 to 20 on both legs. Um, also on the back, so when you do your different variations, you're gonna do 15 of each variation, a total of 60 reps per one set. And you got, you got three sets because you gotta have three circuits. Uh, if you guys feel really crazy, you can try four. If you guys try four, it's gonna kill you. Uh, this will kill you in general. So it's a good way, again, what I base this workout off of is basic movements, but also compound movements. So when you guys are beginning, your nervous system isn't really intact and you don't know what you're doing. So doing these types of movements are gonna get your full body to, to move the way you want them to. And that's where you can progress into things like a row or a bench press, which are more advanced movements that you're not really familiar yet because you're a beginner. You will be, but this is gonna help you get there. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy this workout and let us know how it goes. Um, if you have any questions, you guys are always welcome to ask. All right, you guys, so we're gonna sit down with you really fast. Um, you guys just saw the workout. Right now, we're gonna discuss kind of the beginner this things. This is the bonus footage. Yeah, this is the beginner things that you need to know as far as food goes when you're starting your fitness journey. Um, and we can kind of talk about the difference between when you're wanting to lose weight or if you're wanting to add muscle. Yeah, so... In the simplest way possible for you guys. So this is meant for beginners. If you're starting out, you got three major groups, okay? You have your fats, your proteins, and your carbohydrates. So I always say this, this is the three things you're going to be working with. And those are your macros. So if you ever hear us talk about macros, or mostly me, that's what macros are. Yeah, so... <clears throat> let's start off with fats really quickly. Uh, let's do an overview of the macromolecules. Uh, you, you, so let's start with fats, okay? You have unsaturated, saturated, and polyunsaturated, um, trans fat. Trans fat's bad. Uh, what you want to be doing is you want to be looking for this unsaturated fats, which basically what it means, it's, it's easier to break down into triglycerides, which is stuff that you use in esters, that you, or ketones that you use to uh, burn fat, okay? So that, that's the stuff that's in your adipose tissue. Uh, Beta oxidation, lipolysis happens, which occurs in um, your muscles and in your, your bloodstream. So you're going to break down adipose tissue, goes to your bloodstream, um, and you're going to be using it as fuel, okay? Energy. Uh, energy. Um, so you want to be looking for unsaturated fats, which are like liquid liquid at room temperature there. So you got your olive oils as opposed to butter. Um, so Stay the, solid. the difference between the two, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, consistency at room temperature. So those are the ways you can track if you have saturated, unsaturated fats. So you want the ones that are liquid at room temperature. Yeah. The ones that are solid at room temperature are, you should probably stay away from. Yeah. Um, and, and that comes into my next thing is, is protein. So I always say proteins and fats 
should be taken together, as well as carbs. Um, either one of the two. So you take your proteins with your fats or your carbs. These are going to slow down our digestion and help protein uh, get shoveled into the cell because it's what happens with protein is something called GLUT4 enters into your plasma membrane, which is what allows this, it to be taken to the bloodstream, uh, but it's co-transport. So you need pro, uh, carbs to transport protein into the cell or else it's very like not efficient and you're gonna be wasting a lot of the protein that you eat, which is the most expensive stuff. So always check either your protein with your fats or your carbs. Now why wouldn't you do protein with fats and carbs? So protein with fats and carbs. Um, so all three of them. Yeah, a long time ago all the bodybuilders said if you take fats and your carbs together with protein, you're gonna get fat. And they had a good point because you, you're shuttling out into your body and you're gonna be using your fats or your glucose. Too many um, things going on. And too many things are going on, so you're gonna actually gain weight. I mean, if you take it in, in moderation, it's fine, but you should take one of the two, it's better. So proteins, proteins are basically what's gonna stay the same as far as macros go. So say, I always say 0.7 grams per body weight. So if I'm, I'm 200, I take 200 grams, you can take around 180, if just for an example. Um, and that stays consistent, okay? Because especially when you're younger, you don't need a lot of protein to build muscle. What it is, it's your stimulus to the muscle, which is working out. So that's, that's another thing, people overdo protein mm -hmm. and you know, then they have problems with their uh, gut and their yeah. kidney, nitrogen retention. Digestive problems. Yeah, so all that stuff goes down in your stomach, which isn't really good because your body is just having to digest so much protein. And what is what happened with me, um, and then I learned my lesson. But basically those are the three macromolecules that you're working with. Uh, carbs are gonna get most of the play, so you're gonna be taking it in and out, pulling them in and out. Uh, it's called a push-pull. Meaning you're going up in grams per day or down in grams per yeah. day. So your protein grams stay the same, fat stays relatively the same. You can play with it a little bit, but your carbs is what you're gonna play with a lot. Yeah. And that's what our programs are based off of yeah. with the meal plan. So I know this is, I'm saying it really fast, but that's basically what it is as far as macros go and when you're trying to lose weight so let's say you're losing weight i have a client uh, future doctor right here <laughs> that uh wants to lose weight what do you do okay well you put them on i always put them on a compound movement program for so, beginners so sorry talk about what you did when i first came to you because if you guys don't know christian was my trainer before he was my boyfriend yeah huh, funny stuff huh <laughs> but uh so what i did i saw her she was eating like 700 calories a day i'm like whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> What you want to be doing is, I always say this, you, you eat more to lose weight. And that's a lot of people think like, well, I, I should do that um, because you're, you're going to raise your BMR. Uh, this is another video that we talk about it more in depth, but basically you eat more to lose weight. And what we're doing now, that was a compound workout. Okay, so what compound means you're using multiple different body parts at the same time. You're not doing a bicep curl that's activating one muscle. You're doing a deadlift and a bicep curl into a press, which is going to activate more mitochondrial adaptation and making your body more adapt to losing weight because it has more stimulus to the muscle. Um, and, those, and that's a compound exercise. So these are great for beginners. Um, in addition, for your food, you're gonna be taking, of course, a gallon of water a day um, and work your way up. And you're gonna be on a 0.7 grams of fat um, and you're gonna be slowly taking down your carbs because you're probably eating too many grams of carbs. I never say a percent gram wise per body weight because you're always gonna be playing with it. Yeah and just fix your fats. So those are the three key, th key things that you should do if you want to jumpstart your, your journey, is get rid of your fats, your bad fats. Um, start lowering your carbohydrates if you're not taking enough in, which, I mean, if you're taking more than enough in, which a lot of people are, and uh, get in good quality protein. So I always say this, you are what you eat, and what you eat is what you gotta be looking at. So if a you eat a chicken, and they're eating grains, that come from a factory that's in China with pesticides and air pollution, that's what you're eating. So make sure you guys get good quality protein in you. And then that's what's gonna make the difference. So as far as your macros go, now you're taking all this information in that Christian just gave you and you're like, okay, well I understand this information, but what foods should I be eating? So really quick, an example for healthy fats would be your olive oil or avocado oil or avocados, um, nuts in moderation, of course. Um, Don't eat too much fat because you can fat. Yeah. Um, well, that's a lot of 
peanut butter right. again in moderation. Uh, as the good peanut butter because Skippy's has sugar in it. Yeah, so. so you want to look for like the natural one. Um, as for proteins, you know, your egg whites, your chicken, your lean ground turkey, your lean beef, your fish, your protein drinks if you have to get a protein drink in. Um, as for carbs, you know, brown rice, white rice when it's okay to have it, which we've talked about in previous videos. Um, quinoa, oats, you know, sweet potatoes. Those are the kinds of foods that you guys should be looking at if you're wanting to lose weight or gain weight. And the only difference between losing weight and gaining weight is that when you're losing weight, you're eating at a caloric deficit. And when you're trying to gain weight, you're eating at a caloric surplus. So um, Christian is not a fan of counting macros because he never really learned that way. He just kind of uh, eyeballed it and saw what worked for him. I feel like I have to count my macros so that way I have exact accuracy. Um, so if you guys are looking to count your macros, which me personally, it, it helps in the beginning so that eventually you can get to Christian's level and not have to count your macros. Um, I, the app that I recommend, and a lot of people use MyFitnessPal, I don't like MyFitnessPal. The app that I recommend is MyPlate. So I'll try to put the link down below in the description box so you guys can just click on it and download it. Um, but that's a really helpful app that I've used in the year and a half that I've been on this you know, weight loss fitness journey. And one thing I would suggest you guys is uh, our programs. So our programs are meant to help you and guide you. Uh, through your fitness journey. So what we do is we take people like her that's just beginning and we give them um, a meal plan and a workout program and it shows you exactly how, so like this video. Exactly like this video is showing you how to do the workout. But it's for each day. Yeah, and it's custom, it's custom to your body type. So a lot of times people don't know what to do and, and even though you have all this information, which is on the internet, like you can, you can go on the internet and find all this information. You're going to have to do some scrounging, but it's all there for you. So that's one of the things that people get a trainer is they don't, it's a, it's a jump start. So like they put, you know what, it, what is what? Yeah. And it's an investment to get them going and to understand how to do it. And then it's up to you to do it, yeah. especially because we're online coaches. So we're not there pushing you day by day. It's up to you, but it's there for you to have as a resource. Yeah. So like our five week online program is usually the most popular one among our beginners. Um, and it includes workouts for what is it, five weeks. It's five weeks, yeah. Five weeks workout um, five days a week. So you have two rest days. Yeah, five days Two a week. rest days, workout five days a week. Your cardio is included. Um, your meal plan, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack is all written out for five weeks. Um, your macros are already counted and calculated for you and you have a bunch of, it's a 40 page long program. So there's a lot of information that you guys can use to jumpstart your fitness journey. And of course, with the program, you get our assistance uh, via email or via DM. With that being said, we hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> this video. <laughs> hope you guys got some useful information out of it because it was, it was a lot. Yeah. Um, if you guys like, you guys can like, subscribe, comment. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> check the links down below for the app and for all We're that We're just going to throw stuff. some links down yeah, there. Yeah, just check it out. <laughs> all right, bye, you guys. See you there. Whoa,